Hi, it's Dr. David Green, founder and CEO of R3 Stem Cell International. Today we're discussing uh, head-to-head, and it's first in our series of head-to-head competitions. This one's going to be bone marrow versus umbilical cord stem cell therapy. So we frequently get asked about someone undergoing a bone marrow um, stem cell therapy, and they ask, you know, why should I consider umbilical cord, or why don't you use bone marrow stem cells anymore? Well, I'm going to talk to you exactly about why. So who is R3 stem cell? Well, I started the company 10 years ago. I'm that uh, ridiculously good-looking guy on the right magazine cover there. Um, joking. The uh, uh, So who exactly is R3 stem cell? Um, I started the company 10 years ago. That's me on the right. Um, we've gotten a lot of awards over the last few years as we've moved into more and more countries. We're now at uh, 10 years and 17,000 procedures. We've been in Mexico for the past four and a half years. Uh, we've been in Pakistan for three years. We just opened up in the Philippines and so on and so forth. But we do treat over 70 different conditions. We have over 25 different protocols for patients. We've had no significant adverse events worldwide, and we're continuously on the cutting edge of regen regenerative cellular technology. All right, so let's start with the basics, the stem cell 101. So stem cells um, have, to be, uh, have to have the ability to do two things. One is to self-renew, which is um, basically uh, uh, mitosis, where one stem cell can turn into two, those two can turn into two, so on and so forth. And then the ability to differentiate. So a stem cell by itself has very you know, limited functionality. It's when it differentiates into a specialty cell that it can go to work as a worker bee uh, to help repair, regenerate, whatever it's needed to do. Now, when you classify stem cells, there's really only two sources of origin as far as uh, categories. One is embryonic, and those stem cells come from an embryo. Um, the other one is adult. It's a little bit of a misleading term because you don't have to be an adult. Uh, it doesn't have to come from an adult. It can be uh, an umbilical cord stem cell is an adult stem cell. So you have to keep that in mind. Now, as far as action potential, um, at the top of the totem pole, you have totipotent. Totipotent stem cells can turn into any stem cell, any cell in the body, and they can also turn into the placenta or the embryo. Um, pluripotent stem cells can turn into any cell in the body, but they cannot turn into the placenta or the embryo. Multipotent stem cells can turn into a number of different stem cells. They are limited. And then unipotent just has one cell that it can turn into. So what are the pertinent types of stem cells? Well, embryonic, which we're only going to talk about for another slide or two, you can either have a true embryonic stem cell, which comes from an embryo, either an aborted fetus or a leftover after an IVF, um, or now uh, research is going into induced pluripotent stem cells, which takes a specialty cell and changes it back to being embryonic. Um, none of those are ready for prime time use yet in patients. And then the adult stem cells are one of two types, mesenchymal, which is also called mesenchymal, or hematopoietic. Um, and I'm gonna talk about what those are here in a moment. With regards to the pertinent types of stem cells, there's really only two um, categories. One is embryonic, which we're only going to talk about for another slide or two. True embryonic stem cells come from an embryo, either from an aborted fetus or from um, a leftover IVF embryo. Okay, So induced pluripotent stem cells are also still in the research phase, and that's when you take a specialty cell and convert it back into a pluripotent stem cell. None of those are being used clinically. They're not ready, they have problems. Adult stem cells are either mesenchymal, some people say mesenchymal, or hematopoietic. I'm gonna explain those here in just a moment. All right, so what we've, what we've done is we've taken out um, embryonic, we've taken out toady, pluripotent, and unipotent. What we're talking about in this head-to-head -head are adult stem cells that are multi 
potent, okay? So, as I mentioned, you don't have to have, it doesn't have to be an adult stem cell um, to be classified as such. Umbilical cord stem cells, amniotic stem cells, those are considered adult categorized. All right, what are the variables we're going to be looking at in this head-to-head? -head? Well, the types of stem cells, side effects, the numbers of cells available, uh, their replication capability, and how active are they at being a stem cell function. All right, types of stem cells. Well, we're talking about bone marrow versus umbilical. Bone marrow is an autologous source, meaning it comes from you, the patient. Auto means self. So it's not like you take bone marrow from um, someone else in the world and give it to you. That can be done for a cancer stem cell transplant. That's not what we're talking about. In this case, the, the stem cells come from you. And the stem cells that come from in bone marrow are predominantly the hematopoietic variety, the vast majority of them. Here you can see an aspiration taking place from a patient's pelvis. Um, that's the common, most common way they're obtained. Now, umbilical cord tissue is what's called allogeneic. Allo means other. It comes from a donor. Um, and the predominant type of stem cells in the umbilical cord tissue are what's called mesenchymal, as I mentioned earlier. So here's a picture of the needle that's placed into the uh, pelvic area for bone marrow aspiration. Um, this is the area of the pelvis where they typically come from, which is called the iliac crest. Now, when you get bone marrow stem cells, as I mentioned, they're predominantly hematopoietic. There's very few mesenchymal stem cells from bone marrow. On the right in the graph, you see um, what uh, hematopoietic stem cells can become. Um, they're either going to go down the myeloid line or the lymphoid line. Um, and what you see here is that they can turn into uh, thrombocytes, erythrocytes, mast cells, different white blood cells, macrophages, killer cells, um, and other types of lymphocytes and plasma cells. So yes, they can turn into multiple different types of cells, but it's limited, right? Um, and, you know, it's only as helpful as what you need as far as those cells. Now, with the postnatal adult mesenchymal stem cells, we're talking about the umbilical cord. Now, you can see a cross-section of the umbilical cord here. And each umbilical cord has two arteries and a vein. Those are removed. And we use this gelatinous matrix in here, which is called Wharton's Jelly. Most of the stem cells in those areas are mesenchymal. Um, and there are a few hematopoietic stem cells. So it's different between the two different sources. Now, mesenchymal stem cells have a lot of options. This is not a complete list here. Um, heart, bone, cartilage, cornea, liver, muscle, nerve, fat tissue. It's a pretty nice looking uh, list. So umbilical maintains more mesenchymal stem cells, which is truly what we need for the bulk of applications that stem cells are being used for. Okay, so when you look at the types, the winner here is definitely umbilical. So let's talk about side effects. Um, for umbilical, we've seen no significant adverse events in over 17,000 cases. We have not seen a rejection reaction. These type of stem cells, the hematopoietic or mesenchymal, they don't form tumors. So it doesn't, it's not applicable to either umbilical or bone marrow. Um, the, the side effects that we have seen have been mild to moderate and transient, such as fever, chills, headache, nausea. Um, and on the bone marrow side, you may have to undergo sedation to have the procedure performed. The needle is, uh, is pretty large. It's a pretty sensitive area. It is autologous, so there's no incidence of rejection, but we've never seen a rejection either. So that's not a, uh, a benefit for bone marrow. There is a slight risk with uh, pain from the harvest being performed. Uh, about 35% of patients do have chronic pain from that. Um, there's a slight risk of infection. There's a very small risk of a nerve injury or vessel injury during the procedure. So from a safety standpoint, the winner is umbilical. Um, it's not, uh, you know, a landslide, but it is a win. 
All right, so let's talk about numbers. Are numbers relevant when it comes to stem cell therapy? You're darn right they are. They matter very much. This is why culturing is so important so we can get these high numbers. When you look at um, bone marrow, uh, here's a nice graph that shows what happens as we age. So when you're born, one in 10,000 cells in your bone marrow is a stem cell. But by the age of 30, that goes down by a factor of 25. And then by the age of 60, it goes down by a factor of 200. So it's nuts. Um, one in two million cells in your bone marrow is a stem cell by the age of 60. That is just not enough. So what that means is you'll have to get your bone marrow cultured in order to try and get enough stem cells to, you know, do much. And what that means is you'll have to get your bone marrow aspirated, then you have to leave and come back in three to four weeks. So it's two trips for the procedure. Um, now, you can't use somebody else's bone marrow because uh, they're a true adult, and those stem cells are going to cause a rejection reaction if they're not from you. So it has to be from you, and that's why you have to do two trips to get it done. With umbilical cord stem cells, achieving these high numbers is relatively easy with the systems that we have in place. Uh, it's not inexpensive, but it, it is uh, straightforward with regards to how we've done it. We don't, we've never seen a rejection reaction, uh, so we can prepare it ahead of time because it doesn't have to come from the patient, him or herself. Um, we use an incubator for the first bit of culturing, then we place those cells into what's called a bioreactor which is a very high-tech machine that very consistently um, replicates and cultures these cells to where we get very high numbers, but they're still very, very active um, stem cells. So for a joint, we're typically gonna use 10 to 15 million stem cells. For a systemic procedure, we're probably gonna use one to two million stem cells per kilogram. And when you look at a spinal cord injury, we're probably gonna use two to four million stem cells per kilogram. So let's just put that in perspective. If you weigh 75 kilograms, which is about 170 pounds, that may end up being 150 million stem cells. That's a lot. In order to get to those numbers, umbilical is much easier to do that. Um, so the winner is clearly umbilical. All right, so let's go through replication and cellular activity. I put those together because they really do go hand in hand. Replication means the ability to have one cell, one cell turn into two, um, and then the cellular activity is how active are those cells when they're made. Well, umbilical cord mesenchymal stem cells obtained from a single donor were sufficient to generate a billion stem cells within passage three to four, okay? so. That is insane, and that's what our lab is able to do. We're actually able to create a billion stem cells a week um, with our bioreactor and our culturing system. Um, and these are very, very active stem cells, passage three to four. The International Stem Cell Society says you want to keep it under passage six in order to maintain very active uh, cells. When you look at this chart, what you'll see is that it's very clear. And you can skip the adipose part in the middle because um, we're only talking about bone marrow and umbilical. So with bone marrow, typically a growth arrest happens at passage 11 to 12. Um, why is that important? Well, in comparison to umbilical cord, growth arrest doesn't happen until passage 14 to 16. So even after these cells are placed into the body for treatment, they can continue to replicate. So it's impressive that umbilical cord just keeps on going. Um, and when you look at the colony forming ability, it's much higher in umbilical cord tissue. Colony forming units are what's looked at to see how active stem cells are. So the more colony forming units, the better. And they're much higher in umbilical cord tissue. The growth rate of those stem cells is also higher. Um, senescence means um, it's basically dead. It's non-functional. So at passage six, the um, non-functional amount of bone marrow stem cells is up to 11%. With umbilical cord, it's at zero. So all of them are still very functional. Older adult mesenchymal stem cells um, or hematopoietic stem cells are more likely to have accumulated cellular damage. 
Uh, a lot of them are as old as we are. They have a less vigorous response, meaning they're, it's a nice way of saying they're lazy. Um, so they just, not only are the numbers less, they just, they're not as active. In the postnatal, meaning the umbilical, they're robust stem cells. They're less likely to have genetic errors. Um, they're not the same as a mature adult, meaning they're um, much more active and they're not lazy. And they're immune privileged, meaning they don't spark off um, a rejection reaction. So the numbers winner is clearly umbilical. So why do they win in every category? Well, it's, they're very active mesenchymal stem cells. So they have the numbers, they have the type of stem cells that we want. Um, we're able to get those numbers in a clean room uh, atmosphere that is CGMP compliant, ISO certified. We keep the culturing to the third generation or less just to make sure that we have a ridiculously high amount of colony forming units. These stem cells are very pure, they're potent. We don't use preservative for the most part. That way we can keep our viability at about 98%. Um, if we do have to use preservative, um, it drops it down to 85%, but in Mexico we've never used preservative at all. So I do wanna um, iterate about our safety. Our safety standards in Mexico have always been equitable to FDA standards in the U.S. Our uh, lab is accredited by COFAPRIS, so are our clinics. Um, we assure to the highest quality assurance. In Tijuana, our center is part of an ambulatory surgery center, and in Cancun, it's part of an actual hospital. Um, so, you know, we're all registered with COFAPRIS. We all maintain quality assurance standards that are unparalleled in the industry. So. Last year, we developed the IntelliCell, and this took years of R&D to get to that point where our stem cells are the smartest that are in the industry. Um, we make sure that there's very high colony forming units. We make sure that our culturing has technology that's second to none. Our viability is 98%. These stem cells are able to seek out areas of the body that have inflammation so they can go to work with the repair and regeneration processes. They're very high uh, with regards to their differentiation capacity. Um, you know, some of these centers will uh, treat their cells in such a way that they're predestined to turn into certain cells. And that is not what you want. You want them, you know, to have the smarts to be able to decide what they need to become. Um, and ours do. They're also very persuasive. When they get into an area that has damage, not only do they differentiate themselves, but they also persuade other cells in the area to help in the repair process. They also promote um, translation of various proteins to help. Um, and, you know, I talked about our safety standards. So why should you consider R3 for your regenerative care? Well, for instance, for one thing, we don't use bone marrow stem cell therapy. We stopped doing that over five years ago. We know that it's an inferior way of doing stem cell therapy. Umbilical cord has been tremendous for patient outcomes. We're at an 85% overall patient satisfaction. 35% of our procedures around the world come from referrals now um, because of the outcomes. Our experience is that, or your experience, we include VIP escort transportation. Uh, we have contemporary, comfortable medical clinic settings, um, and you'll have your escort you know, to the clinic. Um, our experience um, in the industry we have over 25 different protocols. Our providers are very experienced and collaborative around the world. Uh, we've done over 17,000 procedures in 10 years. So with regards to our pricing, I realize that's not the topic of today, but I do want to talk about it briefly um, because it has been part of my mission to create uh, the Mercedes of stem cell therapy for the pricing of a Ford. I did that with our economy of scale and our volume. I didn't want finances to get in the way of stem cell therapy because including the IntelliCell treatment, you know, you can't have a procedure with stem cell therapy and expect it to be a one and done. So if you're spending 25 to 30,000 to go to Panama, Colombia, um, how are you going to do that again? You know, unless you're extremely wealthy, well, you know, I know this. So we decided to make it much more cost effective. We only apply extra fees for things like sedation, 
um, intrathecal application into the spinal cord, uh, spine procedures, as well as sometimes patients need treatment over multiple days, there's a slight charge for that. So when you look at our pricing, this is our Mexico pricing. It does vary in other locations around the world, but just to give you an idea of how cost-effective we are, you can get 30 million stem cells at our Mexico clinics for $29.50. 50 million cells is only an additional $1,000 at $39.50. All of our procedures with 50 million cells or above get free exosomes, which are stem cell byproducts that work amazingly well uh, synergistically with the stem cells to, pr to provide better outcomes. 100 million cells is only $72.50. 200 million stem cells is $12,250. You know, we get so many quotes where people want second opinions from our doctors where they've received a quote for, let's say, $100 million for $25,000 or $20,000. Um, it's, it's just unnecessary. You're not going to find a higher quality of stem cell anywhere than what we offer for our um, leveraged uh, pricing that we've brought down and passed along those savings to the consumers. So how to get the process started? Well, if you can visit our website at r3stemcell.com slash international, you'll see where our clinics are located. Um, our uh, number to call to set up your free consultation is 888-988-0515. And feel free to email us, info at r3stemcell.com. Thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for our upcoming head-to-head -head series.